Uh, look, obviously we got a uh, we got a um, you know big week in front of us here. Um, grinding through today with the long week, still trying to navigate that, do the best we can. Um, so we'll have a walkthrough here today. You know, kind of do a, a good job of uh, taking care of our bodies. You know, with the night game off of this too, it's a little bit of an extended time here at the end. So uh, as far as the injury thing. Um, Mike Daniels still will not be, you know, he won't be uh, participating also. And, uh, you know, we had one yesterday, too, that was not out there, Amani. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. He was not out of practice. He won't be out there today either. Um, so other than that, you know, try to get the best we can. Uh, all kind of the phases that we have in right now, we'll continue with the install and do all that stuff as we go forward and, um, you know, just get ready to go. We know we've got a huge challenge. It's a great game, um, everything in front of us as far as that's concerned. But uh, right now, it's just task at hand for the day. Do the best we can to get ready. Um, you know, put the red area in today and, and kind of push forward from that aspect of it. So um, that's all I got for, for announcements. Anybody else? Now, now, every, day, every game in a, in a 16 game season is a big game. But when you look at like off and by, division leader, Green Bay, Lambo, wondering if football, do you put maybe a little more emphasis on this being that much bigger of a game? Uh, no, it's really just that that next game is always the biggest game. You know, I mean, I think uh, certainly from that standpoint, the only thing that does really affect. Um, anything along those lines, but the next game is always the biggest game. Is just when in the season is it? You know, I mean, I think as the season goes and the farther you get along in the season, then you know, from that aspect of it, um, you know, those games are always critical. You know, from that point, but they're all important. We only have so many of them. That's just kind of way the NFL works. Um, and really, for us, it's uh, staying within the moment. I think that's the biggest thing. Wise, you guys have been uh, pretty good coverage. Wise, just how important is uh, Jalen Reese made with that in that regard? Being yeah. in special teams tackles. Yeah. Yeah, he's been really, really good, um, you know, in those coverage phases, uh, in those units. He's playing big, he's playing fast, he's playing strong. Um, probably anticipate some different um, uh, return looks for him, you know, as we as we push forward. So he knows he's got his work cut out in front of him. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, his production so far, um, you know, he's he's really been a uh, critical force in those situations. So many defensive tackles are, are one position specifically that's that's kind of banged up and you're working through that in a practice. How, how difficult is that to, to I guess, manage um, through a given practice week? Yeah, um, I would say any position where um, I would I would categorize it more in big guys. Uh, we kind of call them big guys, semis, and skill. You know, I mean, just kind of those body types. When you start running out of those body types and you're trying to, um, you know, obviously prepare for your own game plan on whatever particular side of the ball or also give the look for the other side of the ball. That's where you got to be a little bit conscious in some of those things. Um, so I think when you have a depleted group or a group that's not maybe practicing as much um, because of those situations, you can also alter practice a little bit and kind of you know just push towards the guys that are out there and make sure that they're getting those reps, whether it's more um, you know inside work, more team work, more seven on seven type work, um, things like that to kind of um, compensate for those situations. But it really happens in any particular of the uh, three areas where the body types just run short. I think there's a bunch of quarterbacks this year that are really good at extending plays. <coughs> In terms of your secondary, I'm curious if it's, do you coach it differently? Like this guy likes to go deep, this guy likes to run, or do you just cover? Yeah, no, no, you want to be specific with what they do uh, when those plays get extended and really who those players are from that aspect of it. Um, I think in those situations, uh, whether the particular quarterback has like maybe a receiver or a skill player that he looks for, uh, whether those guys tend to work towards the sideline that he's going to, whether they work away, whether the guys to the sideline go vertical and the guys from the opposite sideline, from whichever way he moves, they come across. Um, there's just different kind of patterns that teams you know, can use in those situations. Uh, a lot of it is a lot more uh, choreographed or orchestrated uh, in those situations and, and kind of probably what it appears. So you really want to study that, take a look at it so that everybody kind of knows where and uh, where the dangers lie or where their, their uh, better players are. How, how confusing is it for, for coaches right now? I think 20 out of the last 21 challenges of pass interference have not been overturned where sure. it seems like some of them should. I mean, is, does that play into what you're going to challenge or not? Because it seems like it's, it's almost ridiculous that you yeah. have that. Um, I think uh, for us, we just try to do the best we can to, to go with um, the probability of what we think, you know, in those situations. I'd say for the most part, I think just, you know, what's being called on the field is what's being called. And I think we just got to move forward with that. And um, unless we see something that we really think is, you know, a good opportunity for us to challenge it or take a look at it, um, you know, we'll do that. But, but really, for the most part, I, I, I think what's being on the field called is what's called. Challenging them then because the probability is very high. That yeah, the it doesn't mean doesn't mean do or don't. It just means I think that's what they're that's where it is. I know you're constantly studying trends and trying to stay ahead of the curve. Um, one, one thing you guys have done on defense a lot this year is, is just rush three men. Um, you're not 
doesn't allow your, your brush on the free. Um, is, is there something to that? Are you trying to stay ahead of a, a schematic curve here? I'm trying to ask a question in a sure. way to get an answer. Yeah, yeah, right. Check. Got it. Um, I think with the, uh, you know, the three, the four, the five, the six, six plus um, type of rush situations, you know, all of those depend on the particular week of the game plan. Um, I think there's definitely opportunities where three man rushes are, are good, you know, important. Uh, sometime it has to, sometimes it has to do with um, the, the danger of the skilled players that are also out there on the field and how you feel that looks from a overall, um, you know, uh, matchup or situational standpoint. So those are kind of some of the things that go or tie into those factors there. Um, and it's really kind of a, you know, just philosophy of those particular situations. It, it really depends on dominant distance, field position, uh, point in the game, you know, what you're trying to defend uh, in those situations. And also, you know, what are the individual matchups up front? You know, how do you feel about those? Um, quarterback movement comes into play with those situations too, you know. So you try to really analyze all that and figure out, okay, hey, when is this, when is this a good idea and when is it not? And a lot of coaches' philosophy is, is stop the run first. Can you ever see a point where this league becomes stop the pass first, just given the, I sure. guess the, the trend toward passing the efficiency of the passing games these days? Um, I think it really depends on what you think you need to do to win that game. You know, I, and I would say that there certainly are games where it's like, hey, they, you know, they might run the ball here a little bit, and we're gonna have to do what we can to stop it. But we're not, um, you know, we need to commit to these areas, and we need to commit to these situations, uh, and stop those because that's how they're winning. You know, I think that's really what you try to identify first. You know, what does it, what does it take for them to win, and then how do you combat that, and then how do you handle um, when it moves in a different direction? Yeah, I ask about Trey Flowers. Yep. What's been your assessment of him the first quarter of the season, and how important he can be Monday night? Sure. Um, I think you know. For me, uh, Trey, obviously, at this point in the year, I think he's working hard like the, all those guys. You know, he's obviously uh, pushing through, um, uh, you know, his offseason uh, last year and, and trying to do everything he can to just make sure he's working back towards where he wants to be as a player. Uh, everybody starts over, so certainly, you know, we're, we're all looking at those guys just as far as improving. I would say he's definitely improving as the season's going through. Um, he does a lot of things, I would say, that are – uh, maybe not necessarily on the stat list, but you can see are getting closer and closer, which is good. Uh, but I think all those guys are working really hard. Like Romeo Guar is the same way. You know, he works extremely hard in those situations and um, competes, you know, at a high level. And, and Devon Kennard. Um, so, you know, we're just going to look for that improvement. Hopefully, to keep going up with all those guys, and, and you know, we'll see what happens on Monday. We'll see what happens next Sunday. But hopefully, they just kind of keep trending in that direction. Hawkinson still in uh, concussion protocol or is he out of that? And um, that you, you know what? It's a good question. He'll be at practice and everything like that. So, you know, he was at practice yesterday, completed another day, and then they check with the doctors. And I think we got a, maybe uh, one more day of that. And then, you know, we'll see where we go from there. But uh, practicing, doing all those things. But, you know, the doctors, they, whatever the the priority is, they just, uh, they practice and they check them, they practice and they check them and go through until they're all cleared. It should be anticipation of the you expect to be available I mean, yeah, we'll just keep pushing forward with all that, but you know, we're just um, hopefully we'll take it day by day. You know, it's so unpredictable. I would say with those situations, um, that's why it's hard to comment on them really. But um, you know, I let the doctors kind of handle those those situations up there. Okay, all right, great. Yep, good to see everybody.